there's a context that I think is really, really important. You know, in, in the, yeah, there, there were some, you know, when I started 25 years ago, uh, there was still a lot more remnants of uh, the analog way of doing business, right? Andrew, you remember, right? It's like, you know, computers were there, but they weren't fully realized as they are uh, today and databases and the such. Uh, people were still working off their, uh, uh, what your kids might not know, is a Rolodex. Right, it was uh, was high technology at the time, right? But there was a uh, there was an exercise that I learned when I came to Keller Williams. When you get past, you know, the people you know, and the and um, and then the and then the um, was it the wedding list and uh, and there was one. This one is the one I'm talking about. It's called uh, Twenty Five Folks, right? And 25 folks was an exercise to examine who in your life, close, not close, someone you can, you know, pick up the phone and call at least, who in your life um, is, a, um, is a connector with other people? Who in your life, it's just us, just us, uh, uh, just, just us uh, chickens, uh, just us chickens today, right? Um, uh, who in your life is um, is a is a is a is a connector with other people, or that other people look to uh, for uh, for for networking, for recommendations, for referrals? You know, uh, it yeah, sure. It's uh, on a professional level. It can be a lawyer or a doctor or some other service provider at a high level, but. It's also like my mother-in-law, right? My mother-in-law is somebody that uh, you know that a lot of people in her uh, in her life uh, look and say, "Hey, if they get past Susan's filter, they're good." I don't care if they're a plumber or a doctor or whatever. She puts them through their paces, right? And if she's going to refer them, uh, there's somebody worth going. So a lot of people, uh, you know, kind of go to her for that for those uh, for those kind of connections um, I, and so the, the exercise is 25 folks and it's about developing relationships business relationships with 25 people in in your life or around your life that have these connections and purposely uh, activating them right going in and uh, going in and uh, and having a business meeting with them and saying, hey, I'm starting this endeavor or I'm in this endeavor, I've built this business, and you are somebody that people look to for, uh, for advice, for referrals, for people trust you. And so I want to be your, uh, I want to be your, your, your referral for real estate. And I want to earn that, right? It, hey, you know, I have my brother-in-law, he's a realtor. Great, I want to be your number two. I have my brother-in-law, I have my sister-in-law, I have my third cousin, and then the, you know, the, the guy who actually sold my house. I just want to get in line, right? And you want to get in line, and you want to start uh, purposely developing value with those kinds of people, because those kinds of people are the doorway to opportunity for you, right? Start with five. Start with five. Just identify five people. Take them out to coffee. Make sure and and then and then and activate them. Make sure they know you're in business. Make sure that uh, they know what your value and intention is, and that uh, you're going to treat anybody they refer you like family, right? It doesn't have to be, you know, in the absence of value, people look to reward. Right. So, you know, it's like, oh, well, they're asking for a referral, this, that and the other thing. That happens sometimes. And that is that's a separate conversation and, and, and a quite manageable conversation. But make sure you're you're articulating your value first, your intention. Right. With those people. And, and, and you start with five and then you add five more. And, and if you get to 25, these. These are, these are people who, who, who understand the vernacular of 
business in that way. They just, you, you're just not on their list, right, yet. So um, when you're thinking about this question, think about it in that context. Does that make sense? Did I talk too much? No, you're good. You're okay, good. good. No. All right. Sometimes, no. I, go, sometimes I go too far, <laughs> right? Uh, so who's the most connected person that you know? And how could you add value to them, right? You know, if anybody wants to respond to that question, they can. But I think I, th I think it's more of a, you know, conceptual. Well, the piece. whole time you were talking, Joy, all I could think about was you. I mean, you are so connected. You help us so often. And Tracy and I do try to give back because you give us so much. Oh, that's so that's so sweet. And and you are you, you know, you are somebody that I that that that. You know, it, that's a whole different conversation about, you know, reciprocal relationships, right? You, you give, you and Tracy give so much back to me, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, how many years has it been now that you've been doing the morning show? I think it's been two. It's, uh, we're close to two. Yeah. It feels, it feels like it's been longer than that, but as, you I, know, I was going to say it feels shorter, but okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. Well, it has to be longer than two because we did like the Stoics for a year and we're we're almost through Melanie's book, right? Yeah, okay, so probably two and a half. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But the point being is that um, you know, thank you and thank you, right? Thank you for your contribution to me and thank you for you know for acknowledging whatever I could do. But but you know, think about it outside you know, outside of, in, in your personal world, like who are those people who have connections with other people that you can activate uh, because, and then pour into them like crazy, right? That's right. That's right, Joey. But thank you. <laughs> uh, anybody else before we, uh, before we go on to uh, our, our uh, to, to the show? Duncan, I see your brain popping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're thinking about who you can activate. I mean, I was just saying for realtors, you know, they're vendors because they're very connected. Absolutely, they know a lot of other realtors. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I probably meet about 25 realtors a week. So, and in my brain has has limited capacity, right? But you know. Sabine, you know, I, I coach Sabine every week and she was telling me about a property that she had coming out in Calabasas. She's prepping for it, this, that, and the other thing. And I, um, you know, I, I, I meet some agents over in the Beverly Hills office and who do a lot of business in Calabasas and they're like, oh, uh, you know, uh, I'm like, hey, uh, one of my agents has a, you know, $3 million horse property coming up uh, soon, uh, you know, like, I think it's like across the street from where Kanye's, uh, ranches or whatever and they're like oh, oh yeah i have a client for that I'm like okay Ooh, i put them together and you know and and they're they're in dialogue right what is it i have no idea <laughs> all i know is like i said my brain has limited capacity it's uh i think it's in calabasas she asked us at woodland hills she could list it for five million if it wasn't across from kanye's place right instead of living yeah, there i don't know which way that, <laughs> i don't know which way the value goes on that i don't know if you still uh, owns it or goes down. i think what's great is that you can do know. in house you know you actually i if i have agents that are coming and it's say there's another keller williams agent i'm going to be a little bit nicer to that keller williams agent <laughs> And I get that reciprocated as well. So, and I kind of encourage also like, hey, let's keep it in house, even though they're from a different branch. Like the minute you say that, there's this sense of camaraderie that happens. And so there is an advantage that you can definitely take, you know, you can exploit. Yeah, and, and, and to that, you know, it's like new agents, seasoned agents, you, new agents, you know, listen, you know, pocket listings coming soon, all of that, that's all like an opportunity for you to, um, to, to take it out into your universe and to share it with the people you know, even if it's not exactly what they want. You're developing a, value. Uh, yeah, you're developing value with these people. And, 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 and sometimes it's in the absence of need, right? And sometimes it's about real estate and sometimes it's not about real estate, but you wanna take every opportunity you can to, uh, to, to share that. So um, that's, that's the whole, that's the experiment. That's the whole experiment, right? All right, let's get the party started. We got because we got to uh, maybe.
Pardon me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Na dee da da. You gonna do a twirl? There we go. All right. All right. Office mixer. Next Thursday at the Edmond, five to seven. The Edmond's really close by. Uh, we had, we actually had a uh, office. Uh, a holiday party there uh, when they first opened, right on Wilton and Melrose. Lovely little uh, uh, adapted. I guess it was a it was a furniture showroom before. Is that what it was? Furniture manufacturer is what I think it was previously until they made it into the Edmund. Uh, That's which the is, one on Melrose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's been it's, a while. What's that? That's been a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Like I said, when it first opened, we had a uh, holiday party there with hotel. With the little bar downstairs, fun little, fun little place. Uh, and what time is it? Five, five to seven right. or so. Congratulations on the registration for um, for Bold. We have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, thirteen people from the office who are taking Bold. And I can assure you that uh, there will be a uh, there will be a result from this. As, as Charlotte and, and uh, Christina and Tracy could tell you, they've all taken both before. That several it, times. Several times. It propels you. Yes. No, it's great. Uh, I think it's something that you can yep. never get enough of. And you always pick one more thing up. And if anything, if you can improve just one skill every time you do it, then obviously you'll be a more. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting. The last time, um, the last time around, I thought a lot of seasoned agents uh, took it, right? And this time around, it's a lot of newer agents. Uh, and so, I'll, it was uh, my a fan base. what's that? It was a fan base for Cody. It was a, a little bit of fan base, and there. Oh, oh David. Uh, 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 oh, he was the, the teacher now is, is is also very very compelling. But uh, my uh, my advice to all of you is submit to the process. Just do what they tell you to do. Just submit to it, right? As your Just do it. it. Go I mean, do I mean, it. I've done bold like three times, and I still hate that cold calling part of it. But I will say that I do it because I want to get maximum opportunity. You want to get your money's worth. Maximum effort. Yeah. But anyways, I hate doing that. I hate it with a passion. Okay, and I do it. And tell you every single time I do it, I I laugh because I end up picking up a couple of clients. But. Yep. Always. Excellent. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. Where does the time go? Uh, the office staff will not be here on Monday, the second, which is next Monday. Right? What are you doing, Samantha? Okay. No big plans. Brian has big plans. That's right. There you go, Mr. Party Pants. All right. Uh, now, uh, what do we got? Second quarter, twenty twenty four. What is this, Samantha? So KW Cares had a high level of grant request and they awarded more than six hundred thousand dollars to KW agents that needed in need. So I just wanted to share that because that's a lot of money that went towards helping County Wayne's agents. Yeah. And uh, I, I I have to say uh, it is uh, if you have a need or anyone in your direct family has a need, there is a vehicle for financial support. It's, uh, it's a little tedious, right? It's, it's an application, they're, you know, they're not just saying, hey, you do, could you lend me a couple grand? Uh, it's, uh, there, there is, but, but the, the, you know, the vehicle is there to help people. And it is, uh, you know, it's done some really, really wonderful things. Right? All right, uh, upcoming classes. Regional command workshop on Zoom. Okay, uh, this is for this is our regional tech trainer, uh, John Morris. will be teaching uh, a, uh, a command workshop. Uh, new website customizations, new merge tag feature, and email using uh, KWIQ AI for your real estate questions. You ask the AI, and it tells you. Uh, John will go over all the all the new bells and whistles. All right. Oh, when is that? Uh, I missed that. Oops. 830 AM. No, 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 830. Oh, 830 as in the date. Uh, so that's 830, uh, which is uh what is that? Uh, when is 830? Tomorrow. Tomorrow or today? Like Saturday. 
Two days. Friday. Friday. Okay, Friday at 12 p.m. John Morris will be doing it. The QR code's there. Get in on there uh, for your Zoom link. Uh, any registration necessary on that? No, I don't. All right. I mean, they may ask for your name. Market Speaking about the lovely ladies, uh, Lauren and Tracy, uh, uh, the uh, morning show is taking a break. Uh, Lorna? Yeah, next, just uh, until Tuesday Super of next week. We'll be back on Tuesday. Oh, this is your uh, this is your week off? Yes, this is our little summer hiatus. Um, our 9 a.m. group, though, we're having a get together on Friday. So if you know, you know. And uh, right. we'll be back in business on Tuesday at 9 a.m. All right. Excellent. Uh, script practice with Hollywood Hills, uh, Tuesday and Thursday, 8.30 to 9 a.m. Uh, on Zoom, half hour. If you're making calls, cold, warm, hot, doesn't matter. This is a way to exercise your abilities. Uh, get in there and, uh, and mix it up a little bit, right? Uh, also, Scott Leroy. Uh, he has new age and orientation on the 29th, smart plans overview on the 30th, new class, no class, I should say, on the second, and uh, new command website set up uh, on the third, and database overview getting started on the fourth. Okay, uh, for anyone that doesn't have their database set up, Scott Leroy will help you do that. Okay, get in there, get started. It's uh, it's 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 like uh, being in the bagel business without uh, without bagels, right? <laughs> you know, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, mentee meeting, uh, you know, that was a really bad, uh, analogy, but it worked. Uh, let's see, mentee meeting, twelve thirty. Samantha and myself. It's always a, it's always a good time. Always a good time. Class. Oh yeah. Uh, also, worker caravan with Samantha and myself on Tuesdays. Meet here at ten forty-five. It's also lots of fun. I, actually, Samantha and I really like doing it, and it's a little disappointing when I'm not. Uh, there was some great stuff out there. Uh, so I'm in the relationship business too, right? Uh, and so you know, since uh, no one was really really showed up yesterday, I went out to Caravan and I just spent a little more time talking to uh, the uh, the agents uh, uh, the, of the houses that I went to and got a little more you know one on one time with people. So. Uh, I used it also. Uh, forward uh, for uh, or fire coaching Mondays, Fridays, Zoom, 10 a.m. to 11. Yeah, get on fire, baby. Uh, the MLS class with Jose is uh, is Tuesday next Tuesday, and that is 2:30 to 3:30. Again, so, great timing after caravan stay MLS class. You know the classes have been really small, so it's not just for new agents, seasoned agents. You want to come and ask them yes. how to do something? He's here in person. They have all kinds of new little buttons and switches and ways to uh, get things done. It's uh, it's a it's a personal hack. For example, there's a way to do a search on listings if they're offering seller concession. Awesome. It's not a search field, but there is a way to do it. Oh, is that like a teaser? Yes. Oh, all right. Sure. Well, the new guys know how to do it. Right? Okay, excellent. Maybe you can teach uh, everybody else, right? Uh, escrow timeline. I, to to class. I taught this one time before. I think it's a really great class to understand the linear nature of the deal and uh, and who's doing what. You know, there's uh, there's escrow, there's lending, there's the buyers. There's the sellers, there's the documentation, there's the inspectors, there's the, uh, who am I missing, Charlotte? Uh, the escrow. Retrofit. Uh, was it, who did I, who? Retrofit. Retro, termite, retrofit, all those things, right? They're all working at the same time towards the same goal to get you closed, right? Uh, so I kind of draw it out to, because that's the way my brain works. In a, uh, I draw it out on the board and do a timeline of who's doing what, when, and how. Right? So you don't have to uh, fear the deal. 
Escrow. Oh, look at that sexy bunch. All right. Let's start with Andy. How are you doing today, Hi. Andy? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Um, so speaking of what, what's that? I said some days all right is better than the alternative. Yeah. You know, um, just grateful. Um, anyway, so speaking of, um, of relationships and referrals, um, obviously everybody's seen the headlines, right? Rates are headed in the right direction. Um, we anticipate some, a, a little bit more volatility and some ebbs and flows and so forth. Now is really, really a great time to tap into the Rolodex, so to speak. Start connecting with your old clients that you've closed in the last couple of years, right? Ones that that are in the the high six to even upwards of eight percent. Start calling them just to check in. It's a great time to tee them up for a refinance. Maybe they've got some life changing event going on. Maybe they have to sell, etc. It's a really really good time in this transitionary market. Um, eventually, rates will go down. I'm doing it myself, calling everybody that's closed um, even beyond the last couple of years um, because you just don't know. There's a lot of folks looking for home equity lines, um, et cetera. So tap into that and you never know whose path you're going to cross. I've, I've been connected with CPAs and financial planners and, and so forth um, in the last several weeks of clients who I closed in the past. Um, anyway, just a really good opportunity to, to connect. You never know who you're going to run into. Um, Andy, is there anything that, uh, they can do with you to prepare for, you know, kind of, you know, kind of set up, set the stage. And then when the rate gets to where they'd like to see it or where you feel like is a, uh, a bottom, but, uh, a leveling off that they can like pull the trigger yep. quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's kind of along the same lines as somebody getting pre-approved, right? So many times sure. we have clients that drag their feet, drag their feet, and all of a sudden their dream house pops up and nobody's prepared. It's a scramble and it's an, oh crap, I need to get my stuff together and I can't find my tax returns. And, and it's a last minute scramble um, to get that pre-approval and get the offer in, right? Same thing goes sure. with the refinance. People drag their feet and they go, oh, okay, eventually I'll get my, my stuff together. And before you know it, the, the moment rates drop, um, it's not yeah. that it's too late, but you miss, you literally miss the opportunity because I have to have everything physically in and alone ready to go in order to lock in that rate. If we see a drastic drop in one day and I don't have somebody's uh, documents and their, their file ready to go, they lose. Um, and, and it, it sucks. And so you wait for the next go around, right? Um, I am literally teeing people up, even if it's for three months or six months from now, it, at that point, if it is six months, let's just, let's just say, then it requires just updated pay stubs. So, um, it is, it's always worth a conversation, um, because we don't know, we could have a, a huge drop one day, um, we could also see some, some swings the other direction, but you want to have people prepared and it's, it's always worth a converse, conversation. Um, you know, and also let me just make note too. So I don't know if everybody's aware, but do you know that 60% of loan officers have gotten totally out of the business in this 60% of loan officers have gotten out of the business? Wow. 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 That's, that's a crazy number. That's so. You know, uh, the survival of the fittest, right? Um, and the same yep. goes for real estate agents too. Yep. And so whether you're in contact with your client's old lender or not, it's it's always worth a conversation. Um, we're, we're definitely headed in the right direction. Uh, we've got some more jobs data coming out next week. Um, and remember this jobs information is, is highly skewed. Um, if you... Uh, the BLS, um, the jobs numbers from March of 2023 to March of 2024 were overstated by 800,000 plus jobs. Overstated. So, well, some of that was what uh, part time and seasonal. They added everything in there, right? It's uh, yeah. It's anyway. Yes. So we're headed in the right direction, and we'll we'll see what happens with with the election and and so forth. But um, all signs point to uh, 
something's got to give. So historic historically, elections have not changed uh, the trajectory of the real estate market. Um, I mean, aside from like people holding off to see what happens, the human factor yeah. uh, on the financial piece, it's really not uh, have made a difference historically. Right. No, no. And, you know, but but in terms of in terms of real estate um, and and lending, I know on on my side of things, there's definitely been a seasonality factor. Um, of course, then you throw in the rates and so forth and the election. And I feel like there's been a lot of people sitting on the fence. Um, now, I think more than ever is a great time to get people off that fence and and really light the fire. People are going back to school, et cetera. Um, now the time to to jump so people are 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 cautious and it doesn't take much for them to uh you know slow the process down in one yeah, way yeah. or another yeah yeah all right, we andy, see it all the time you, people yeah yeah you bet yeah oh. see you guys soon oh hold on andy to add to that, to that election thing um when you have a client that says that i mean a lot of us have been through several presidential elections <laughs> Um, in our career. And I used to think, oh, that would affect it. It doesn't affect really anything. It's just your client perceiving it's going to affect it. So please reassure them that whatever happens on that day doesn't necessarily affect the very next day. Like the house will still be there or not be there or whatever. It really doesn't matter who's in office in our market. Maybe it does somewhere else, but it really doesn't affect here. And I've seen it with my own eyes. You've seen it with your own eyes. Um, so in your in newer agents, especially when your clients say that hesitation, say historically it has not affected anything here in Los Angeles. Unless they're looking on Kenter Avenue in Brentwood, which there are five listings right now. That would literally be probably the only place is where it, it might affect something. That's hilarious. Yeah. And why do you think that is? I am this I am. Oh, well, that's been the case. No, because that's where the house across the street from Kamala. Is, is on the market. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> and that could be kind of a pain in the ass to get yeah. it out, I suppose. Yeah. I could say, as somebody who is the daughter of a Secret Service agent, you do not want to live across the street from a protected official. Exactly. So that is probably why. <laughs> I mean, you're very safe, but it's a huge hassle. And anyone that comes to visit you has to be screened. The good thing about the area, Everybody. there have been a rash of burglaries in Brentwood and the Palisades, and the Secret Service is helping out. So it's a net benefit. Another layer of protection. Exactly. There you go. And speaking of layers of protection, Duncan, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> you like I that? mean, that was a, that was a my great intro. Yes, that was <laughs> wonderful. Um, hi, everybody. Good to see everyone in person, as always. <laughs> No, is that sorry? I cracked myself up. What did that Sorry. Spitty. Okay, there we go. Um, anyways, uh, I just want to say thank you, as always, for all your business. You guys are amazing. You're definitely in one of my favorite offices I work with, so I appreciate everything you guys do. Um, just a reminder we are going to have limited hours this weekend uh, for the holidays. So, any kind of claim issues that come up, um, AC, whatever, uh, if we could get them handled earlier than later, that's great. Um, we do have staff internally part of the weekend, but it will be limited and for a shorter amount of hours. So feel free to text me. I will be by my phone if there's an issue, but just know that it may have to wait till next week. Um, depending on the time of day it happens and what the issue is. And also, obviously, contractors are limited this weekend as well. Um, the other thing I want to mention, which I know I've talked to you guys about before, but it's great to get in front of a claim. If you know what I would tell your client when they close with a home warranty is let you know when they're about to make a claim because you don't want to get blindsided after they make a claim and they're dealing with the internal team and not getting the best service. So we want to get ahead of it. If we can get ahead of it, we can create a much better experience for your client, um, making you look like the hero. And that is always my goal. So what does getting ahead of it really mean like, uh, like presenting it properly. It yes. So, I mean, the idea is, well, first to let them know, 
to reach out to you as their they, agent. They have a partner yes. in this process. They do, and I'm their partner, and so is you, the agent. Yeah. So what you want to let them know is when you're about to make a claim, reach out to me so I can let my home warranty partner, Duncan, know so we could get ahead of it and make sure you have a better experience. Because if they just go call the 800 number with us, with any of the home warranty companies, they're probably not likely going to have a great experience and you won't find that out till a week or two later so the idea is get ahead of it see how we can um, you know resolve it quickly and get on top of it and even if it is a denial down the road it's a much uh, lighter pill to take when there's been all this prep work done and they feel like they've been taken care of along the way so we've done everything possible correct yeah a positive outcome. Exactly. So, and the, and the other piece to that is if they do call in, and again, this goes with us or any home warranty company, tell them, this sounds weird, but tell them to be very careful what they say when they call in, because in every home warranty policy, there is a pre-existing condition clause. So one, one issue I'm dealing with right now with a claim, not from this office, but a different office is, um, it's an HVAC claim. and the homeowner told Fidelity on the phone that it was in working order, but they have not moved into the home yet. And when they came into the home, it wasn't working properly. Well, the problem is they said on the phone that they hadn't moved in. So therefore that could be considered a pre-existing condition based on the previous owner. So the next step would be to pull the inspection report because they did say on the inspection report, it says that everything was working fine at the time of inspection. But just remember, there is a window be between sometimes time of inspection and uh, the day the client moves in, and that window could still be considered a pre-existing condition. So my other recommendation is on uh, the final walkthrough, you know, you want to you wanna turn on those systems and make sure they're fully working, whether it's the day before close, a few days before close, on that final walkthrough, use that time to go around and check the systems and make sure that they're in good working order and note that so that if a claim comes up later, um, we could prove that and get that handled. So excellent. that's all I have. Happy early Labor Day. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. We know you have plans. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, birthdays, new listings, and top listings and close escrows. Let's go. Uh, birthdays this week, Alexandra Pukachov, Andre Perkins, uh, who's here every, every week but this week, Crystal uh, Mateus, and also Sophia Wolfson have birthdays this week. All three of those people were all born on the same day. All right, uh, some close this week, uh, closings this week, Annie and Don Lee on St. Andrew's Place, uh, close a um, close a condominium. Michelle Mena, close High Point. Uh, 10, 1073 High Point was a really great listing. She did a really great job at uh, at prepping that property and presenting that property. Vinny Park, uh, his closing on 132 South Kenmore. He also got completed this week. Uh, some new escrows in. Uh, Anna Lee uh, on Serrano. Christina Kim on Sentinella. Uh, Rachel Biggio and uh, Tiffany Chin on Canoga. Pete Bonacore and Rossmore and Caroline Wiener on Belfield. First one's Anna Kim Jones. I'm sorry? First one's Anna Kim. What did Anna I say? Anna Kim. What did I say? Annie. You said Anna Lee. Oh. Uh, oopsie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anna Kim has a new escrow on Serrano. There you go. Uh, it's some closed leases this week. Uh, Star Jasper and Terry Gerger on La Punta. Uh, Mike, Michael Cartagena on Industry. Uh, Day Young Her on Citrus. Uh, all closed some leases this week. Excellent. And uh, some new listings. All right, residential listings. Uh, we have uh, Tracy Pence, 1345 oh, North Fuller. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Two bedroom, two bath, 1,201 square feet uh, for 700 for the introductory price of $715,000, uh, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, it's a You're going to come in and want to give all the money. 
Y'all give it all. What's the sanctuary? It's 468 and it includes earthquake. You have two parking spots. There's a little pool in the back that nobody uses. So you have a private pool. And, um, you know, the building's smaller. It's uh, just 18 units, which sounds like a lot, but it's not because there's like three, there's three floors and there's three on one side and then like the little fire door and three. So it's like, you almost just have a little thing going up. It's really quiet too. So also we've had quite a few people at my open house. Well, not quite a few, but in retrospect, considering it's been slow. Um, and the people that have shown up, showed up with purpose. So I'm expecting possible offers. So if you have somebody, I will suggest to my clients to hold off till after the holiday weekend before they make any decisions. Okay, excellent. Uh, Laura Anderson, I saw this yesterday on High Point, beautiful uh, new construction, four bedroom, four bath, 2,221 square feet for 2695, a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, reconstruction. Uh, it's not even reconstruction, it's, it's a new build. The, the same developer is uh, almost completed a property right next door, uh, another beautiful property, two really uh, lovely units. Uh, Anna Lee has uh, 514 South Harvard Boulevard, a condominium, two bedroom, two baths, 1,183 square feet for $565,000. Seems reasonable enough for square footage. It's uh, five, uh, what is that? five something a square foot. Uh, leases. Uh, there is, uh, Christina Clark has two uh, units available in Westlake Avenue. You want to tell us about that, Christina? Yeah, um, they're built in uh, 2023. Uh, they're like 1,600 to 1,700 square feet. They <coughs> have like their primary, two primary bedrooms, their own two bathrooms, um, and they come with parking spots. This looks like a nice view. It's a great view. Hollywood Hill, like it's a, the Hollywood sign, the park going along the freeway, and then if you look at the way you Where's it, Westlake Avenue? It's um off of Beverly and Alvarado. Oh, okay. Got it. All right, so you get to see uh, the Griffith Park Observatory? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. Uh, look, it looked like there was uh, maybe a, is that the dining area? Yeah, it's the dining area, yeah, yeah but it's a, like old floor plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, good job. All right. Uh, also, Anna Lee has uh, 629 uh, Traction Avenue, um, a, a condo for rent, two bedroom, two bath, 1,290 square feet, 3,800 as a mezzanine. I wonder if that's two bedroom and a mezzanine. Uh, Dragana has uh, 1,252 South Ridgely. Uh, that's a great little pocket there. It's on this. Uh, this is, what kind of odd little circle. I, I love that. Uh, I'm where I met you. You think so? You have a listing there, like. I could have. Yeah. I think oh. Where does the time go? Uh, a studio, one bath, 650 square feet for $2,500 or $2,495. It's a cute little number. And uh, bucket listings coming soon. What do we got going? Tell me about something that's coming up. What's in your pipeline? I mean, I still, um, I have that property in Bellflower. It is a complete fixer, uh, three bedroom, three bath, something like that. Anyway, the thing is, is uh, we were having, we were wondering if the tenant was gonna move out. She has agreed to move out. So we've done, we've, uh, we've negotiated the cash for keys. Yep. So it'll be back in September 20th. And I need to move this really, really fast because the client has already identified her next replacement property and she needs to proceeds from this. So we were originally going to go to market, but uh, she has authorized me yesterday to completely go off market. And if we have a decent offer, she's ready to move. Okay. What's the upside on it? So like I comped it, it's like anywhere from like, um, like 900, you can probably like Fully done. Um, so we're at right now at seven ninety nine. So it's eight hundred. So fully yeah. done. Would it be I mean, fully done for a hundred grand? I don't know. It's a, yeah. Fully done scares me. Uh, yeah, I just but, no inventory. Really great pocket right next to uh, Cerritos and Lakewood. Yeah, um, it's like literally one block over. 
CCREOs. And so it's a very, very nice uh, residential pocket there. And there's no inventory. And so I just, I find that there's a lot of end users are still looking for a lot of these type of, sure. you know, type sure. of things. But because of my seller situation, we act, actually, I think that we may have to activate this like off market. And so if you have clients that are looking for fixers, this is probably a good opportunity. Cerrito adjacent. Cerrito adjacent. <laughs> Literally a block away. Literally. Okay. And Any, then, yeah, and then I have that? the Redondo Beach. Also, that's going to, you know, we're going to talk about going live. I do have an off market, but uh, offer, but we don't know if we're going to accept it. Anyways, that's going to be a great pocket right next to Palace, uh, Palace Birdies. And it's in like literally a block away from the beach. I want that. And it's a hill as well. So it's great. It's a three bedroom, three bath like uh, 2,100 square feet, and we're pricing this at about 2.49, so 2.5. It's ready to... It's beautiful, and the last couple of tenants have been interior designers, so they just really... Like, yeah. take, bumped it up a level. Yeah, so, but the view, last... Little view out the window, uh, out the bathroom so, window from an angle? I'm not sure. I haven't even seen the okay. windows, but, uh, <laughs> I've seen it. I have so much. I don't even look at them anymore. <laughs> so, anyway, so my, point, my, point, my point is, is that if you've got someone looking at South Bay, it's very hard to find this location. So if you're looking, if you've got a buyer out there, then come talk to me and we can certainly talk about that. But talk to your uh, fixers, your investors. Those are the people that want inventory like Bellflower. So this is an opportunity. Because it's an off market, it will help you. Learn. Sounds kind of tight. Uh, I don't know what it's gonna bring, okay. but again, like based on the comps, you know, like yeah, based on the comps. Experience end user probably. Yeah, I sold one just recently, and we're closing escrow this Friday, and we sold it to an end user, and you know, we sold it at a very very premium, and I had nine other people that wanted it at a very high premium as well. Hmm. So I have actually two buyers that I'm working with right now that specifically that I met through that listing and they're looking for like a blank canvas. You know, they don't want to do major structural changes, but if the flow, the floor plan is decent and it's cosmetic repair, they'd rather do that themselves and pick something that they like as opposed mm -hmm. to getting something that is already turnkey sure. with poor yeah. craftsmanship and very inferior finishes, you know? So. Water, and a watered down more premium finishes, markup right? yeah. as well. Watered down finishes, right? It's a, it's like it's like slap, well, it's like lipstick on a pig. Well, I know, but you, know, the the idea is the investors are are creating these uh, these these products that are like likable to the largest group of people. It just it, may, it waters it it's down. It's better photogenic, of point of view. but it's like once you go there and you yeah, see the grout, you different. see the tiles, you see what they've chosen, you see it's like really bad. Yeah, I get it. We've seen it. Yep. Uh, who else? Charlotte, how's your uh, how's your listing going? Very well, thank you. Yeah. What's uh, what's the what's the update? You got uh, you got offers on that? We have four offers in hand. We're expecting two more this afternoon. And you're going to uh, you're going to um, counter counter uh, next what what like probably later today. Excellent, excellent. But then we have a couple we have more showing. Yeah. Well, Very crowded open house. Yeah. Single family home was, market is so Sunday. fucking crazy, okay? This was a this not was a everyone one, though, because we did Sunday. price it very aggressively and we actually had a good reason for it. I mean we definitely could have priced it higher. This is the one I had in Pasadena, which none of you know about because it's kind of amazing. <laughs> but Don't but um it uh it was a three bedroom house that was very, very large. So it was very difficult to price because on a price per square foot basis in the neighborhood, everything's kind of a thousand to 1500, depending on finishes. Um, but they're at 4,700 square feet. They had five and six bedrooms and this one had three. So it was a little difficult in that regard, but, but it has the market amazing... will take it. The market will take it where it's going to go. Excellent. Get a lot of people through. There you go. Tiffany's waiting. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Rachel, for coming. And thank you, Sophia, for coming. And everyone who Instagrammed it. Yeah. Yeah. I posted a lot of stories. <clears throat> Popular on Instagram.
All right, we have a two bedroom, two bath, and a plus a loft with a super uh, modern contemporary unit in my old building, very close by um, on where you know, Central. Uh, we'll be coming out at like nine ninety eight thousand is the purchase price, and HOUs are pretty low, three hundred twenty five a month. Well, yeah, it's a fifteen unit building, super easy to manage. Um, it's a good unit. So. Is it? I mean, you know a lot about that building. Mm, too you say much. It's a really well run building. She runs it. She's <laughs> 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 it's it's HOA prison. Okay. They yeah. won't let her go. Okay. <laughs> we have strong reserves because we. Um, I may have some. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's, she's been in there for you know. Nobody else wants the job. Uh, I'd like to give as a much as she would like. No, I thought you had it. because you don't live there. There might be a free meal in it for you if you uh, sell it to somebody who wants to be the HOA president. Nice. <laughs> uh, and w and w which unit is it? Uh, one of the upper next units. Next to my unit. Oh, oh next to yours. Yeah. Uh, so, so it has lots of level. glass and it has a mezzanine and it's it's nice. Yeah, I like that building a lot. Yeah, I'm a fan. Uh, anyone else? Pocket listings coming soon? Anyone? Anyone online there? No? All right. Ready, set, go. Can I just? Oh, say yes, you one may. Thing? Yes, you may. COVID is massive. It's right massive. Now. Massive. So please just be careful, be aware. The new vaccines came out last weekend. Um, I have no idea. I mean, it's all over my house. It's almost like everyone I know has it or has had it in the last couple of weeks, so uh, just be aware. I feel like I had a low-grade version of it a couple of weeks ago or something, you know. It's uh, it's the spikes. biggest, it's it's the most prevalent it's been in two years. And also the new uh, the new strain is somehow uh, evades the uh, detection uh, detection process. The, Rachel being one of the people. <laughs> I just had it. <laughs> you just My worked. first time. Yeah, oh. I, and I, I'm lucky. I mean, my husband and son both have it, and I managed to avoid it. But it, just please be careful. You had your bone? <laughs> your bone? Oh, yeah. yeah. I actually had a friend who just died. All right. Uh, let, uh, other complications. Uh, other complications. Uh, okay, though. let's go. There we go. And, and let's, uh, yeah, let's, once it needs to fill the bucket. Anybody? No wants or needs? Anybody? Anybody? No one need anything? Any gratitude? Share some love? Anybody? <laughs> Josephine? <laughs> We're not feeling it. Okay. I will say I am very grateful to Duncan. Like he, oh, Again he with Duncan? Duncan. Yes, you do, Duncan. No. Like the fires off, I'm like, oh, Andy, Duncan. 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 Thank you. You guys have been great. Oh, no, you're great, Duncan. <laughs> Chip and Gail, no, back and forth. It's great to have, you know, I, I, I like to work with people that are nice. And it helps, huh? I like to work with. Yeah. So you, you ladies are definitely nice. They're, they're a class act. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so far. <laughs> no. uh, any other ones that needs uh, fill the bucket before we move on to our presenter today? Anybody? 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 Okay. We talked about this uh, previously. Brian, uh, Ryan, Mr. Meltzer is going to come up and talk. Uh, Ryan's going to talk about uh, the uh, the investment network. I talk about it every week, but I think that uh, I think it's a really you know it's Samantha and I are building like a, like tools in your toolkit kind of thing, right? Uh, in, and and this is this is I think one that is invaluable. To uh, to any listing presentation, come on over. Come on over. How you doing? Good to see you too. All right. Have a you can have a seat. You see where you are in there. All right. Uh, you sure do. Well, bam. There, there we go. I, so I, I I'm going to tease you a little bit with I've got a world premiere video for you with a celebrity oh. from your office. So that's my that I, I that's how I'm going to fill the bucket. I'm super thankful. That I've done a few transactions with this wonderful person in your office, um, and they've had some great success. But I've had a bunch of people um, in our morning meetings. Every first and third Monday of the month, we do a Zoom training. You are all welcome to it. Many of you have come to it, um, and many of you have asked for this specific 
So I want to give it to you and I want to explain a little bit of what it is. In my presentation to your office initially, I spoke a little bit about the four options that people, more and more agents, are bringing to listing presentations to help you land listings. And I'll tell you in the last 90 days, we've helped agents land over 600 listings in 14 states that we work in. Of those 600 listings, some we're involved in, some we're not involved in, but the bottom line is we want to help you land more listings. How many people want more listings? Come on, raise your hand if you want another listing. I guess only half of, only half of you want listings. So I'll go over it for you real quick, an example and understanding, and this is an example of a flyer that we created, obviously, for Samantha. If you want a flyer, let us know. When I'm done, I'm going to give you a QR code where you can send us an email um, and tell us that you want the flyer. We can get one made for you, or we can leave it white, or we can do, we can just give you the text. You can make it however you want. So the example of a traditional cell, uh, sale is what you all and what I've been doing as a realtor for as long as we've been realtors. It's a standard sale, the way we traditionally do business, or what we like to call staged and reimagined, which I can't really read right now, but you'll get the idea and we'll be able to show it to you. Um, so that you'll understand, but you know what staging is, you know what it's about, you know that there's going to be a cost to it, house. right? Put some, Put some money in to get a better return for your client to help them show their property better or renovate and completely update. Spend the time, effort, and energy to add value to the home so that they can get more for the home if they've got the time, effort, energy, or money. Or, and you guys are actually the first ones to see this, we're starting to coin this new term, whisper listing because almost 40% of real estate today is sold off market. I'm gonna say that again, almost 40% of real estate in the state of California is sold off market. And how much of that do you think they're using realtors for? Like almost zero. So you need to be able to combat that. You need to be able to walk into a home and say, I've got a program that's better than anything that you could do. And we can do everything that open door or we buy ugly homes or investors, whatever, we can, I can do it better as your realtor, I can do it for less, I can protect you, I can give you everything that you need and want, I can do it discreetly and conveniently with no work, no prep, no, house, no open houses, no showings, no MLS, no cost, no stress, and you want to learn more about that, I'm happy to share that with you. So I'm going to show you a quick video, whoever's too, I don't know which way to go. It should work. I think so. I think it'll just. Yeah, because I think it goes on that. The fact that options are so important. 18 years ago, there were no options. We did business one way. We had one offering, one option, and whether people liked it or not, as real estate agents, we would get the job done. You talked about how the business of real estate has changed, and you talked about the four ways of selling. The difference between a successful realtor and a not successful realtor. You're all going for the same end goal. Oh, star. I'm Samantha Allen. I've been with Keller Williams 18 years as an agent. I have been on all sides of the game, working with buyers, working with sellers, on a team as an individual, director of the escrow department for a large team, and currently I am the agent services director at Keller Williams Larchmont in Los Angeles, California. Let's start a little bit maybe with the process of how you heard about the investment network, kind of the first steps that you took before we really kind of get into the transaction that you had. Well, it is a great story that I like to share with people anyways, because the transaction closed. So whenever you have a closing as an agent, it's exciting and you want to share about it. So I start off with telling people we had a call into the office and a woman was curious about the value of her mother's home. Her mother had just gone into a facility. And so she just was starting the inquiry of, well, let's find out what the value is. So I said, okay, I set an appointment with her for like four days out because I knew that I couldn't do comps and drive around and do all my research the next day. So I set an appointment with her a few days out. And then within a couple of days, Ryan and his team came and presented what they do to our office, to our office meeting. So the timing was just perfect. So that's sort of the background of how I got introduced to Ryan who came and presented. My question is to speak to what the investment network, what you after transacting with the investment network, what you feel like the investment network is, is willing to do for you and your business to not only help close difficult deals, but also help land 
sales too, help land um, um, listings in being able to go into that situation and say, here, client, I have this option right. for you. So I'll kind of step back and let you speak to that a bit. So I will. So what I loved is not just the convenience versus price, which was sort of your opener. You talked about how the business of real estate is changing and you talked about the four ways of selling. And I literally stole your speech and reiterated it to my potential future client, right? She wasn't a client yet. And one of the options of selling it today, one of the four options is to accept a cash offer. And so when I got to that point, I used it last, you know, there was no pushing anything. I said, and if that's an option that sounds is attractive to you or sounds good to you, I do have a cash offer with me. I literally took what you said and brought it with me and you know that work and after 18 years of doing this when you're in an escrow you're not on opposing sides you're all going for the same end goal Amen. you wanted to close for your client i wanted to close for my client the clients wanted to close so i mean everyone's really working towards the same goal and that's what I appreciate about working with you, Ryan, as well as your team of the investment network of everyone had the same goal of doing what needed to be done to get to get it closed because then your client is getting a good deal because the key is it's off market. It's an opportunity. It, it was great. It felt like everybody was working together to get to the goal that both of our clients wanted. That is the difference for anyone. Again, anybody who's watching or listening. What Samantha just said is the difference between a successful realtor and a not successful realtor. It's a difference between somebody who who wants to succeed and somebody who's just kind of floating through the business, hoping for a deal, hoping it goes smoothly. And if it doesn't, then what it just it, the fact that you the way you put it, that we are on the same side, we're working together, even if I mean, in this situation, we try to be your partner and help you, but not every agent feels that way. They feel like they've got to fight you to get what's in the best interest of their client. And it is almost never true. The truth is we all have the same goal and we're all working in the same direction to try and please our clients. And that perspective is gold. Thank you. That. Seeing my head that big and a little bit warped is a little uncomfortable, but so here's the QR code. If you want more information on this, we would love to share it with you. I've got some flyers that I can hand out, but um, yeah, thank you so much. I'm I curious. Love, I love the, I love the, the whisper. This I was going to ask it about that. It, uh, you know, that, that kind of, you know, investor sale right. kind of vibe is kind of has a, has a, has a, is a little tainted. It's actually, um, that was actually Samantha's idea because we say investor a lot. And never think really like you guys are on the front lines with yeah, homeowners. Yeah, yeah. We're thinking investor, and you're thinking better to say buyer than investor because they may not be too into that. Yeah, when they say investor, yeah. they immediately go to uh, uh, you know I'm going to get ripped off and sell. Right, it, right, right, totally. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. I was curious because this is actually the first office meeting. This video will show in hundreds of offices over the next few weeks and months. But this is the very first time we're we're showing this. And, I'm curious what you all think about the idea of a whisper listing, just to be able to offer that to them. Look, we can do it off market. There's lots of ways that we can do it. And calling it a whisper listing, I think is kind of nice and maybe a little more. Yeah, you really should, because I have yeah. clients who actually say to me, I don't want to sell to an investor. Right. So saying investor would be a big turn off for a, quite a few of my clients actually yeah. who love their home. You know what I mean? It's special to them. They don't want to sell it. They, that's their feeling. So, they flat out told me that. So we can present it to an exclusive network of over 100,000 qualified buyers, not investors. And when they get 50 offers or a dozen offers on the house, some of them are from investors and they're as much or more than they wanted. Hopefully they'll accept that in your best interest. And also when you list it, you get all the commission. So if you can get five or 6% commission, we accept no commission. We do our transaction and we charge our buyers for the right to be a part of our network. So if you can list it for more, you can get a hundred percent more. And in some cases, maybe even relist it. If they're going to be flipping it, get involved on that end as well and create even more business. I'd love to talk to you more about how you can do this, how we're doing this for thousands of agents. And by the way, in the city of Los Angeles, this is exclusive to your office right now. So you can walk into these meetings and home and listing appointments and say, there's no one else offering this, but you. You do it in San Diego too? Yep. 
Absolutely. We, we cover the entire state, um, and we're happy to help you anything you need. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Ryan, thank you. You stick around, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Excellent. All right, guys. Thank you for coming. See you next week, right? Yeah. Next week, uh, you know, we're, we're, it's week. a theme week, right? Exactly. Duncan, what's the theme next week? <laughs> On the spot. Uh, after Labor Day recovery. After Labor Day recovery. <laughs> like, is that like a torn red, white, and blue? I don't know, but I'm going to be at the mixer.